Welcome back after a long break. And since it's been several weeks since we have last met, I want to summarize where we have been and where we're going. So, the whole issue is we're dealing with five major theoretical views in environmental sociology. We finish the macro theories. The macro theories were long-term ideas about states, environmental dark ages, etc., like that. Um, we have talked slightly about neo-Malthusianism. This is the belief that population is the main variable of concern for environmental problems. And it was critiqued, of course, by many other views that we've already analyzed. I slightly touched on the new ecological paradigm. This was our discussion from the late 1970s, where people began to argue that sociology is biased to analyze only human-to-human -human relationships, and we need to have a social science that discusses the interscientific aspects, the human and environmental interactions as the basis of sociology. And what would social theory and social analysis look like if we started our analysis from relationships of humans with nature. Last time we also discussed a bit of eco-Marxism, uh, particularly I discussed Schneeber, Schneeber's idea of the treadmill, treadmill of production. This was the interaction of monopoly capital, states that support monopoly capital, but the states are also split in their loyalty with alliances to citizens and consumers. And these three areas are full of conflict, Schneeberg says, and this leads to environmental degradation as they agree to ignore their conflict and expand environmental problems and resource uses. In the last lecture, that was one side of what we talked about. And I mentioned it was critiqued by ecological modernization. And I showed you some charts but from the 1970s into the 1980s and 90s. On the left-hand side was the 1970s, which believed that environmental problems are connected to the economy, and the economy is innately environmentally problem, problematic. And then later on, people began to think, well, the economy doesn't have to be destructive. We can choose different forms of materials and technologies and avoid environmental problems. Miko Miko Marxism discussed the environmental problem as a material problem of capitalism. Schneider continued this in saying that everybody is to blame. It's an organizational problem that innately leads to environmental degradation. And Schneider felt the only way is to reduce the treadmill to decentralize the economy. And that was his hope, based on his eco-Marxist analysis. But soon after Schneeberg, there was another school of environmental sociology arguing that some countries are moving towards environmental protection and economic growth. They don't see environmental degradation as always coming with environmental growth. So the entire basis of the analysis switched from a Marxist or capital criticism view to almost a pro-capitalism view, uh, which meant capitalism simply needed to adapt, become more rational. And this is something we're continuing today. This is what Ulrich Beck is going to argue. How many of you heard of Ulrich Beck? I don't know, maybe not. Ulrich Beck is a German sociologist writing in the 1980s into the 1990s. And he begins to argue that the modern forms of conflict, Marxism as a theory of conflict, the modern forms of conflict are not connected to capital and labor, but they're connected to people who want to avoid risk and people who create risk. So risk for Ulrich Beck becomes the centerpiece of conflict in societies. So Beck continues with an analysis of conflict sociology but is very optimistic that through this conflict, the environmental problems can be solved by more rational capitalism, more rational state institutions, a more re 
science process. These factors make Beck very optimistic about the future while being very, in some cases, darkly funny uh, and critical of the existing world that he sees. So today we will move through this fourth section, continuing our comparison between blades of capitalism and solutions of capitalism. You know, better state institutions, better capital institutions and choices. So you can see the huge difference between a risk society or ecological modernization view and a you know, Marxist view. So I'll read this it's from the 1980s to the present. Possible examples of states and economies reorienting economic expansion with the environment in mind, unlike eco Marxist assumptions. Environmentalism moves from a social movement which was outside the state, and most people argued it would be never never been possible to enter into politics, where increasingly many states legitimate themselves by talking green politics. Even right now, uh, with the conservative party in South Korea, you have the president talking and constructing his policies as green. And I, of course, I think I would disagree. But the fact is that he uses that and realizes that this is the way people construct their world. I'm leading into the fifth view. The fifth view was the social construction of the environment. This developed in the 1980s. I will probably start this by the end of this session, and we'll continue talking about social construction into the next session. This is the almost the last in a simple series of different theories that have developed. Um, this uh, ranges from hard constructionism where the environmental issues are entirely fabricated social constructions and thus unreal. To soft constructionism, where environmental issues are real, though they require social construction or it goes unnoticed. For instance, for a hundred years, people knew about acid rain, but no one discussed it in the media. No one talked about it as a major social problem. So it wasn't constructed. This is something people began to analyze about the claims making of environmental movements and states beginning in the 1980s. This was the larger turn in the uh, university system to discuss cultural frames and cultural uh, identities connected to material problems. 